Okay. Mr. McKinnon, if, if you wish to, I can send you the link uh, to come in here. And uh, actually, I can send the link to everybody because uh, we can have anybody come in here to ask questions and so forth. If you're interested, if you're willing, no pressure, no expectation. Just if there's anything you want to explain or talk about yeah, or answer especially questions. Especially if there is something that that you yelled at your screen that we don't, we're not getting that's important. <laughs> we definitely want to hear that. We probably don't want you to, to yell at us for it, but we'll take it. We don't care. We're, we're adults. We're, okay. we're on the internet. We understand abuse is that. Yep. Oops, I'm hitting the wrong button. Yep. Um, why am I hitting the wrong button? It's the invite button. I know, and I keep hitting share screen over and over and over Here, again. You want me to do it? I can do I, it. I, okay, you know what? I, I copied it, but you're probably smarter at this than I am. I close out the thing in the middle of the stream. Yes, you do. There you go. <laughs> Um, I do have the book available if you want to, if we want to refer back to it, I've just taken it off the screen, but I still have it available. If yeah, necessary. Still has it up. Just. Effective level. Yes. Oh, wait, I... we have to go ahead and change it to segment three. Yeah. Oh, it's a good, good point. I got it. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep this as part of segment one, since we didn't do the rant, we can put segment three up there, but I think I'm going to keep this depending on the kind of questions and so forth we get. Um, I'm going to, uh, because I think this might be important to have as part of our segment one. Okay. Since that's the developer. But anybody is allowed to click that link. That's why it was put out there for everybody. Um, we just won't kick out Mr. McKinnon. <laughs> like yeah, we will if you. If he comes in, anyone else gets kicked out. So that's just well, the way we can, we can have up to 10 people in here. Yeah. To ask him questions. We'll just have one other. Well, well while we're waiting for him, I'm going to go and refill okay. my drink. Um, so yeah, well, we, I'm also going to mention that, uh, no, I, I, uh, anybody who's watched the streams that we do for a long time, you already know my problem with the book, but I, I, I've talked about it. I've been considered insensitive about it. I've had people rail at me about it. I've also had a lot of people tell me, thank you. So I, I'm sticking to my guns on that. On that aspect, it isn't going to change anything, but but I'm sticking my guns on that. But to, other than that, I do. This is a system I want to play. Oh, there we go. This is definitely a system I want to play. I want to try it one time. Um, oops, got some echo in the background there. I hear myself talking. Uh, just wait. Okay. <laughs> no. Just wait. Okay. And. <laughs> No problem. <clears throat> that happens a lot. This is what I do professionally, and I see it all of the time. Like, at my real job is video conferencing, and I see it all the time. No. Um, so, uh, was a Gaijin can't enunciate properly? In our, what? Uh, I won't jump on the crack. Yeah, <laughs> Japanese. Well, there you go. That's <laughs> uh, I get yelled at all the time about my Japanese. Or my lack thereof. No. But, uh, yeah, uh, but no, I mean, I love the art. Let's put it this way. I am not mad I purchased the book. Oop, let me get him back in now. Boom. Test one, two, three. Still problematic. Nope, everything is <laughs> Glad Heathen Dog isn't here. He hates that word. <laughs> but no, everything is good. I absolutely 100% appreciate you being here, putting up with our shenanigans and so forth. It's, it's what we do, though. Um, and answering any questions that people may have, or honestly, just telling us where we're totally wrong or where we got some things right. Let's see if we have any questions on here. Does anybody else want to come in to ask directly or <laughs> P word everyone drink? Or do you guys just want to ask the questions uh, in chat? I, I don't care either way. We want to make sure your questions get answered. So for our first time ever talking about this game, literally I got the book, I think it was like uh, two weeks ago. Because I live in Germany and I had to go through the APO mail system. Um, what did you, how did you think that this overview was? Was it, was it fair enough for people who had never played it before? Yeah, I thought it was good. It had obviously, uh, you know, a lot to try to accomplish with the game. Obviously, a lot of details, and so I wouldn't expect it to, you know, be able to cover everything. The attribute section alone could take hours to go through. But no, you did a, a great job covering through it. Uh, a really good feel for the 
um, kind of the nature of the game, emphasizing a lot of the things that I thought were important to emphasize, like the session zero, for example, was really good to go over that uh, and understanding the foundations that, yeah, there's some terminology differences uh, with some of the other games, but there's also some familiarity, you know, like you mentioned about, you know, why do we use the, the term race, for example? Well, I agree, species is much more accurate, of course, but of course, D&D &D calls it races. D&D &D uses classes. And so because of that, using that familiarity tone seemed to make more sense, where while they use ability scores, we use stats. Uh, and that goes back to obviously 1997. So oh, I thought it was, was great, really appreciate the opportunity to follow along with everything you're doing there. And, and I'm sure a lot of people, once the YouTube video will be out, will be able to have a chance to, to go through it and, and sit and it's enjoy the long. way I have. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate yeah. that because it is going to be a long one. Um, I just had something in my head. I'll let no, him I, I have something. I have something. Uh, uh, of the things that that we did get to cover today, obviously we not not all of it, but of the things we did get to cover, um, what what do you think is the most important for a new player to really wrap their brain around to get the best experience from this game? Yeah, I'd say the number one thing would be uh, the templates. And although, you know, I understand why you thought maybe put them after. And in edition three, they were after the character creation session. So they, they didn't come at the end of the book. They come out after character creation. But the reason why I moved them in this particular edition was to emphasize their importance for newer players. So while you don't understand everything that's in the templates, what they do is they get you thinking about what kind of character can I play? And they give you ideas and you don't have to understand the specifics of the game mechanics, but you have to look and say, oh, wow, I, I'm Mecha Pilot, that sounds kind of fun. That sounds interesting. I don't understand what's in this template, but I like that idea. And so it's to get the ideas first in the, the templates to do that first. And then once you have that foundational aspect of choosing some templates, then you can go in and understanding the game mechanics better after that. Now, obviously, if you're an experienced player, you don't need templates and they're not for everyone. But for your first time exposure to either Bessem specifically or an effects-based point-based system in general that's universal and so it covers everything it was really designed to get you thinking about that and you can jump in so quickly by just taking your points choosing a race choosing a class make sure they're within your benchmarks for your level adding on some stats whether it's 444 which is your 24 that's exactly the baseline mm -hmm. always think every character has already spent 24 points is what i like to think uh, when you're going into it and then working from there so i think that's probably the number one thing is with after session zero which is clearly the most important which is right, why right, yeah. it gets such a, a big section on that well and, and your your video on that pointed that out uh, very prominently because i watched all the the what was it the one through sixes that you had uh in character creation they helped me out immensely because i was i was struggling with some parts of this and i think the reason i was struggling uh, with learning this was because i do have a lot of that <laughs> old school mentality like I, I can't remember if it was you that said it or if it was a uh, saber expert but to, like old school people like to roll dice yes <laughs> yes that that is absolutely true i actually want to toss the bottom banner and move heathen to i'll how about this i'll move myself down oh there you go i'll let these guys stand on top of me i probably deserve it anyway uh but to, so one of the things that i noticed uh online is I, and it legitimately surprised me is other than yours and a couple of quick reviews, I don't see a lot on YouTube about this game. No. And, and that honestly, because I know how much he, he then <laughs> likes anime, uh, Garthon, who's another w one of our, uh, streamers. Uh, he, he's played Bessem before and I, I can't remember yeah, the second or third edition. edition. Was first. it first? Yeah. Oh, it wow. was first. Okay. I talked to him yesterday. Yeah. He played first edition. Okay. Uh, I honestly thought that it would have a much bigger YouTube presence. Yeah, the so the print edition just hit the stores in mid-October. So uh, there was numerous delays for COVID and then printer issues. And so we've adjusted all that going forward. We're not going to make the same mistakes. Obviously, we can't adjust COVID uh, timelines. But that there are some issues that, that, we're, that you just, went you double demonetize this. of why it took so long. So <laughs> the PDFs were in people's hands in December from the Kickstarter that ended last September. So they had mm -hmm. it in their, in, their, in their hands in PDF if they backed it. And so since December, it's been out in the wild. And there's been a few reviews. But I think part of it uh, really is... Uh, well, even though people are on lockdown and, and kind of doing a lot of distancing, it's 
people just aren't in a great mindset right now. Uh, you know, I, I know how much it affects me. I mean, I'm doing a lot of work productively. I'm far, I'm probably a, a year ahead of where I thought we'd be with the company because of all the time I've had to, to work on it because of obviously the distance. Say I'm not seeing my friends. I'm not playing games we used to. So while the PDF has been out for a while, certainly the physical copy has not. Uh, and that was in stores in mid October backers got it end of September, early October. And so it's still very much a new product at this point. Previous editions of Besson, there's a good amount of stuff out there. I just think it'll take a little bit of time for it cool. uh, to percolate and for people to think about things other than masks and and <laughs> yeah. washing your hands and, and everything else yeah. like that. You, YouTube is a, is a strange bird though, because uh, in for over two years, uh, uh, Garthon and I had, uh, had, our, had our show pr uh, previous to this one, uh, Legion Myth Livestream, where we talked about uh, comics, animes, and tabletop games. And I, I did anime and tabletop games. And almost universally, my, my, my anime views would be one-tenth what my tabletop game views were. And it was because people didn't, didn't go to YouTube for anime anything. And it could be part of it. The YouTube thing is because it's, 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 it's an anime game. I mean, the, the tabletop thing should help because I've had, you know, thousands and thousands of views on hero kids and GURPS and champions. The ones I did, you know, the, they're, they're, they're still going strong, you know, one, two years out They're They're still getting, you know, hundreds of views, you know, a week and stuff like that. But anything with anime attached to it is almost radioactive on YouTube for views. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that's that's certainly a factor. It is a, a niche market of a niche market. Obviously, it's something like Dungeons and Dragons, your standard fantasy has a lot more viewership. But I also think it, pl it plays out to one of the reasons that in some ways limits the amount of coverage that you can give to a game like Bessem is because it is so story driven and narrative. And so because of that, there's not a lot of crunch to talk about. I mean, how many stuff yeah. you've talked seeing people talk about the rules and the details and the character optimizations and and how do you min max the system the best and and those right. discussions just aren't fruitful in Bessem. Uh, so when people talk about Bessem, when you wanted to have a discussion about it yes there's the initial rules you know there's always going to be the here's how you play the game but after you get past those videos then everything is so specific to people's individual gamer groups and campaigns and they're not as uh universal i guess so something like gurps which maybe not as popular as it once was but you could talk a lot more about gurps and hero systems you can debate the game and and have people debating how you do something with the math where yeah. oh, that God, kind of yes. falls flat or we do have a discord oh, channel God. that there was a fan group set up for that uh that that does some of that but it's so limited compared to other games and i think that's yeah that that's to me is a success of best one. that's how it was mm -hmm. designed that i didn't want it to be the game that we talk about the math of the game or what was the designer trying to do it's like it's not my game it's your game and the math isn't important the story is important right even though it's a 350 page book <laughs> which seems to go against the fact that it's a story-based game but we give the foundation so that you can then turn into a story-based game by taking giving the mechanics and then allowing it to step out of the way and let the story to take over well, well, that's the goal anyway and i think that might be one of the reasons why we don't see quite as much coverage for it we're also yeah, you know micro company we're, we're we're not dungeons and dragons we're, we're really small and we were bigger with guardians of order the previous company that, that did the first two editions and then did third edition before we sold it off to white wolf uh we we're a bigger company then a lot smaller now well of the okay, 350 wait, wait. pages you, you, hang on hang on uh he, he he said he said the bad words white wolf um <laughs> what what if if you don't mind answering what what uh what caused that move to to white wolf Sure, that was strictly financial. So, you know, step back into the beginning of, uh, you know, 97, 98, 99, when Best on First Edition came out, we did the Sailor Moon role playing game. Uh, very, yeah, very World successful. Very we did some excellent stuff. Yeah. And yeah, th Strong. thank you. I'm, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Uh, and when things were going well with the economy and with the exchange rate and with uh, sunny skies in the gaming industry, running a, a gaming company was easy. But then, <laughs> things started going differently. And the Canadian US dollar exchange rate, we're a Canadian company and 95% of our income was American dollars. So every dollar of sales that came in, I'd get a dollar 62 Canadian to pay my employees, for example. Like it was it was amazing exchange rate. And when that started changing down to 
um, and the industry was also contracting. So D20 sales in the early 2000s were going up and the smaller third party companies like ourselves were going down. And with those combinations of the thing, I kind of didn't change how I ran the company. I continued running it as if it was a boom cycle back in you know the late 90s, early 2000s, but my income was not there. The company, Guardians of Order, could not support our expenses. We had like a quarter million dollars in salaries every year, for example. We had excellent employees and we, we paid them decently, but we, we paid them beyond what was feasible for a company of our size once the exchange rate started going sideways. So it came to a point we had to shut out the company effectively you know the employees had to be let go and then there was debts that had to get paid and so selling off the assets at that point was you know, a very dark time obviously personally and a lot of people got hurt by that a lot of financials didn't get paid a lot of business partners didn't get paid and we tried to extract as much equity as we could and so selling it to white wolf made sense they took over the publishing of our game of thrones role-playing game that we did we, we produced it and we just couldn't publish it we didn't have the money for it so they took that over and when i saw that they were doing that they were the logical choice to approach with uh with their their sword and sorcery studios so they had kind of their their imprint it wasn't white wolf proper it was their imprint that had uh like aberrant for example and some of the other smaller companies and so we sold it to the white wolf imprint and that's, that's the Swedish who one, we right? Thought would be, would be the best choice for the game. The, the, that that's the Swedish version of it, right? The AB, if I remember correctly, because I think Sw White Wolf is now part of Paradox, if I remember correctly. I, right. I forget how. So that yeah, that's okay. right. So it went through CCP. The White Wolf mm -hmm. sold the CCP, and then CCP sold the Paradox, and then Paradox is operating White Wolf independently, and then some things happened and they absorbed White Wolf into Paradox effectively. So now, while I still say we're licensed from White Wolf because that's what the contract initially was, it's really, we have a license with Paradox to do best and fourth edition, as well as Silver Age Sentinels, which we're doing a new edition next year for the superhero game, which is TriStat again, uh, and other TriStat games as well. Well, I, well, I will with Garthon being the comic book person, and uh, I know uh, Heathen Dog also. Is, I'm like the nerd man out here. Yeah, I don't do anime. I don't do comics. I'm just a tabletop gamer. But uh, you, you're talking about the book being 350 pages. I, I got to tell you, one of the things I really loved about the book being that big isn't is the fact that it didn't have the crunch in it. It was just all about options and options. By the way, the folks I've been trying to scribble down the questions. The folks who have asked some questions, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so I, I think the fact that, again, like we were talking about there, you know, we say it somewhat facetiously, but it's also somewhat true. We're old. We come from a different generation and we see some of the things you put in there. And the fact that you're willing to tackle those things, I like the, the you know, the, the way you put the attributes in there, how it's not hero system. But I can recognize that, you know, some hero system aspects, you know, at least in my brain, I'm not saying you took it from there, but uh, of like how weapons and items and companions and so forth work because that's how i visualize it so it helped me like oh this game is all full of options uh i don't expect that you've ever watched our channel before but like last week i was telling these guys i said it took me forever like years after i stopped playing the game to understand the concept of range killing attack in in, in uh in hero because I want I want a gun that shoots a bullet yes that's a range killing attack d6 whatever like no 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 i want a gun that shoots a bullet like, right but his fireball is the same thing as mine Yes, points wise, it's the same. I don't get that. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but it took forever. I saw it plain as day in Bessem. So I don't know if you wrote it differently or just I, I because I now understood it there. You got I matured. Understood. I got matured, whatever. There you go. And and the tristat system, uh, we're going to do the dice roll stuff next week or go into that more next week. But it's so far, it's simplistic, seems to make sense. And I like, as you said, that it is so much story driven. And the, the, other, the only other comment that I want to make based on what was said before, so we can move forward uh, the other comments is, uh, I hope that this overview, that people understand that this is an overview and we weren't here to show everybody how to play the game and, and, and to get in that crunch and so forth. And I hope this overview actually does spur on more people to create videos of their play sessions or of uh you know how to do a step-by-step -step here and there you know kind of like how your videos were for character creation i, I oh yeah yeah uh, as a matter of fact i was i was going to say earlier that uh the, this this uh this this doesn't have the crunch of say the hero system that you know champions that that i did so much so uh there i had i had one youtube commenter 
who commented on every single <laughs> champion's video. No, you did it wrong here. No, you did it wrong there. No, you did it wrong. This. And I finally, I finally called him out on air and said, listen, if I'm doing the math wrong, let's collaborate for the next videos. And we you got to create a base. We got to create a vehicle. We got to do this stuff. Let's do it together to get the math right. You, you can, you can stop talking to me about it. We can start doing it. And by God, he stepped up. And the, the next couple of videos, we we used Discord, got 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 together, collaborated on on all the math, made it right, you know, crunched it all up the the way he wanted it crunched, you know, to get the to to squeeze as much juice out of that point system as you possibly could. I wasn't doing that. I didn't want to go that deep in a YouTube video, but he wanted to just crunch us, go squeeze it, and we did, and they were great. And then I'm going to tell you, that's why I like Bessem, the tri-stab system, better than Hero right now, because I don't have to worry about power pools and multi-point or whatever, all that other, right, right. everything's yeah, straightforward here. Yeah. Everything's straightforward here, even the even the weapons and so forth. Yeah. Um, I, I'll give you a chance to, to, to jump in here. A, a, a lot more simple. And uh, you had mentioned about the similarities to Hero. I mean, certainly, first edition Bessem was incredibly rules light. My background, although uh, like most people, I started with Dungeons and Dragons. I moved into Amber, diceless role playing mm -hmm. very early in my role playing uh, in 91. And for me, that became the end all be all of narrative storytelling. It, that was what I wanted. So when I created Bessem, I wanted to get as close to an Amber like experience, but I still wanted some sort of game framework. So the first edition was very, very light. When when I was moving on to second edition, I brought in David Pulver to the, do the majority of the work he had done some work on an expansion for first edition that kind of add a lot more options and david pulver done an incredible amount of gurps work i mean that's where his background was in gurps and, and he knew a lot about hero as well and so it had the second edition morphed into more of a gurps and hero feel i mean in the end it's a more robust point based effects based system if you go look at any of the ones that have not not the really really light light super light point base but if you go to to an a point based effects based system they're all going to start looking like hero gurp mm -hmm. Bessem, tristat they're all going to have some similarities there uh, and so what we wanted to do is we kept the framework of it being uh math light and much more intuitive using language uh that you know like something that we didn't use a lot of acronyms and a lot of short forms. It's just why I've made a point never to call health points, never to call them HP. They're always health points. Uh, and it's body, mind, soul, incredibly short. They never have to be shortened to anything. And that was a purposeful decision early on is to take the acronyms out of it. I mean, I have a strong chemistry background. We're using acronyms all the time, but I didn't want science in my games. I wanted language in my games so that people can talk about it that maybe don't have as, as sciencey or mathy a background. So it certainly has similarities to those. And, and I appreciate all the comparisons to a GURPS or Hero, of course, and it's they're gonna have uh, get to the same end, but through very different means and will probably appeal to very, very different gamers. All right. Uh, let's see if we can answer some questions here. Um, sure. A lot of old timers hate the concept of using PDFs. Just want their physical. That's me. I hate PDFs. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I like it's not just having a book in your hand. It's just that after a while of reading a book, you can just flip to the page. And Apparently you can do the PDFs too, but, but I suck PDF, at it. You're like, oh, guys, scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah. God damn it. But, but yeah. what's <laughs> amazing about PDFs is searching for words. That is true. Yeah. There's an index in print books, but whenever you want to find every instance of a specific word, oh, I love PDS for that. For I, that, I can't yeah. argue that. I can't argue that. Yeah, but if, if you're looking for a specific table and you know it's on page 154, but in the PDF you type in page 154, you're plus or minus up to four or five pages scroll scroll up down fuck where am I? Ah, ah god, there it is. Got it. But if you have it in your hand, you just go 154 and you're there. I love that. I love so, it. so Saber Esper, uh, Expert asked this question twice. So we better answer him. He said, will you guys okay. do a YouTube video of playing Bessem 4? Probably not. And here's why. Neither yep. of us like online gameplay. No, we, we do not. I mean, I, I, I need people to be near me to, you know. Feed part, off of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, to feed off of them and, and to give them the proper energy. Now, I'm going to try, like, for, for, the, for the whole, you know, sub- you know, sub milestone giveaway. I'm I'm going to run a a one shot uh, Call of Cthulhu Fourth Edition uh, game. I'm going to try it 
in this format in this for format for for youtube subscribers members and uh and twitch uh subscribers as well but uh <laughs> uh it's it it's going to be hard because it's it's hard to to give the the non-verbal clues that you would normally as a game master and as a player to other players, stuff like that over the internet, some stuff is lost. Just like, just like texting without emojis, nuance is lost. That's why emojis were created to, to, uh, to, uh, shore up the, 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 the loss of inflection, things like that. And, uh, I don't, I don't think online gaming has that, that equivalent, that emoji, uh, rectification equivalent for, uh, for role-playing that uh that texting has all right well let, let's we have a guest here so let's let's actually ask our guest a question so this is from shadzar that scares me it's from shadzar <laughs> uh, is there any anime uh, is there any anime game genre I, I keep hovering over it and losing my space here is there any anime genre you left out you wish you could have fit in but just doesn't mingle well with others um i i wouldn't think so i mean because obviously when when we the game is mainly about the game when we added on in fourth edition and in third edition, we added on kind of the, the anime multiverse, which was really intended to be an example of the genres and what you can do with the game. And so unlike uh, like a what world of darkness, for example, this isn't really about the, the stuff we're presenting. We're giving the tools that you can do your own thing. But when we look at the, the, the prime worlds that we had set up, so earth is kind of your, your central hub, and then you have six prime worlds. And we go mm -hmm. into details about those. We covered most of the major uh, ah, so we got the fantasy, we got the more uh, fairy tale fantasy, and we got the more high fantasy. We got horror. We have uh, post-apocalyptic that has kind of a, an environmental bend to it. We have space opera, you know, your, your Firefly slash Cowboy Bebop uh, slash Star Wars, if you want to play that. So we hit all the major genres. Most of the other ones are going to be more sub-genres under there. What we didn't go into a lot of detail on were the slice of life genres. Like, I want to play high school cooking as a game. And that's great. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know how much setting we need to provide for that. Uh, we have the rules to, that you mm -hmm. can do it, but I don't yeah. know how much direction you need from us where... The, uh, the concepts of a high fantasy setting, you know, it's obviously Dungeons and Dragons, but if you haven't played D&D, &D, maybe you want a little bit more context to that. So we have some interesting bands where our world of Icarus, for example, is run primarily by mages instead of uh, warriors. So you don't have your warrior king, you have your mage kings. You know, some some variations like that. But the, the real strength to me comes down, although people can run any genre with it, and that was the intention there, genre and, and uh, any timeline, any setting, yeah, is the... Yeah. If you really want to play anime, Food Wars, you is, can do it. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the cross genre, cross hopping. And with the, the multiverse, we have powers built in that how you can go between different dimensions, different worlds, and you can either do it between worlds or dimensions in one session, or you can have it session to session. Think of like a, like a Stargate or uh, sliders or something like that. And that kind of diversity also allows people to play the characters they want. And so you'd have the, okay, we're playing fantasy. It's good. Great. I'm a mecha. It's like, well, okay, <laughs> sure. You came for portal from the, the high fantasy from the mecha world. Yeah, and so now you're in the rest. fantasy world. And, and that kind of works, whether it's, uh, and you see it in anime all the time, so many different S uh, shows where people, a lot of like, high school students, but not just that, people can come through with tanks, uh, people can come through uh, with fantasy into Tokyo, for example, you can play in a real world type setting, but now you have your magical girls or you have your your horror demons. I mean, demons in Tokyo are like such a trope for anime, for example. <laughs> so that's kind of the the thing that I think we're, we're really seeing the strength of it is you can do whatever you want and blend it together in the same game and it still works. Well, you, you mentioned two of our favorite shows. Uh, I, I know you, uh, Hindo was a huge fan of Sliders back in the day. I'm a huge was, Stargate yeah. fan. So, yeah. I, I have so, all the episodes on my Plex server. <laughs> well, I have oh, a feeling really? the three of us are roughly the same age. So uh, <laughs> certainly a lot of that plays out. Like when you I'm mentioned, probably I still the oldest face -to -face one. As opposed to virtually. I mean, I'm very similar. I would much rather face to face around a table. Uh, but if that's not going to be the reality going forward, I have to make it look at making some changes. So be it. We have to adapt. That's 
one of the advantages of PDF books now, as opposed mm -hmm. to print books, that you can do this virtually, even though I'd much rather sit face to face with people and, and play yeah. that way. I mean, some of the, the best role playing sessions that we're, you're, you're playing for 12 hours around a table. And yes. Pizza. And I granted it's also university years before marriage, before children, before responsibilities. What, uh, what is that? But, How does that stop anything? Yeah. I, I, so I think <laughs> our age certainly has that familiarity. Put your wife in your pl in her place. What you yeah, Crafty, yes, we are reading chat. We're just kind of going through, uh, and we're, I'm hitting, because we have some questions in order. I absolutely do appreciate, uh, if you missed it, Heathen Dog, Crafty sub five more people again. Five more people? Yes, I did miss it. I was away. I, oh. I, I, was, I was getting a drink, and then, and then halfway through, I realized I also had to use the Heathen Dog's room. Well, I'll let you scroll because I'm, I'm using uh, um, StreamYard's chat. I'll let you go back and Twitch chat, and you can That's bring that I'm up doing. in a moment. Yep. Um, so where were we? Uh, basically, where I was welcoming. Uh, where does Bessem D twenty come into play? I bought that about two thousand ish. Didn't know there was a, there were other editions. So uh, interesting about Bessem D twenty. So uh, this is actually we were. I was at a the Gamma Trade Show in Las Vegas, and that's a big industry event that a lot of people go to. And that was probably two thousand one. 2002 we were there and i was driving back to los angeles afterwards to hang out with some of my gamer friends john zinzer uh president of aldrack entertainment group they did legend of the five rings seven c oh, really? they're mainly they're into board games now but john zinzer great friend and he had said so yeah are you gonna do a besom version in d20 it's like no like try set system so much better why would i possibly want to do that and he says well if you don't do anime d20 someone else is gonna do that i was like oh crap you're right um you know, I had the, the, the Guardians of Order had the lock on on anime role playing, and the D twenty field was getting huge. And so I thought, oh, you're you're right, John. We really do need to do it. And so, how do I take my point based universal multi genre system and tag it on to D twenty, which was primarily a fantasy based, power based, not points based, not effects based system? And the answer is, I think I did it very badly and with a lot of arrogance in it. Um, well, yeah. I would say, you know, if, if, if actors say they do those films for the money, I could say I did best in 20 for the money. And that's well, what we needed at the time. Um, yeah, exactly. some people love it. you know what, it you, is, you are not alone. Before, they asked him the edition. same mistake yeah. in, in the early two thousands that yeah. they, 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 nope. they came out with a call of D 20 and it was a flop. It was an absolute yeah, a lot failure. Of people did. And, and sales wise, it best me 20 did quite well. And reputational wise, I mean, we did, uh, uh, we released uh, the SRD of it. We were very few companies that actually released a full SRD. Mm -hmm. Our open gaming concept of that was let's make it open as possible and then release the SRD so other people could use it. And very few people were doing that type of stuff. So we embraced it fully, but it was with an arrogance of the goal is to get people playing Bessem D20 and then move them from D&D into Bessem because we are better. Tristat is better. Effect space is better. And that was my goal. And I think it, it, did, it didn't fail or succeed. It is what it is. But as a design product, I think it was a failure. Which leads to forward, 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 forward. We get best on fourth edition coming out. Great. Um, and then someone said, what about best in D20? I'm like, no, no, I'm not doing best in D20. It was done and we're in fifth edition. There's no longer D20 in the same way. And then the lockdown on COVID happens and I have all this time in my hands like, ah, let me just start tinkering with this fifth edition thing and just take a look at this and just start deconstructing some stuff. And a few months later, it's like, oh, so apparently anime 5e is a thing and it is done. It's, <laughs> I wrote that and it's going to be coming out next year. It's something we haven't talked a lot about right now, but this is not the best in D20 updated for fifth edition. This is taking a point-based anime approach to Dungeons and Dragons, not taking D20 and slapping on onto Bessem. And this product is vastly superior to anything I did in Best Me 20 because it respects the source material. It really plays to its strength and it integrates fully with Dungeons and Dragons and none of this alternating systems and, you know, our system is better. No, no, now you can play your, you, if you have a D&D game and then someone brings in um, a magical girl who happens to be a cat girl and brings that in to your D and D group with your fighters and your wizards and your clerics and it works. And so oh, anime five oh. E is coming out next year. We are so happy with it. Oh, I, I, I want to read that just to, just to really, really look at all, at the possible balance issues that could happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, what I did that, is I, mean, I, that, I that's deconstructed, gotta be a tightrope. De- deconstructed everything down in that's presented in fifth edition, deconstructed all the classes, all the races, understand mm-hmm. all their abilities. And then when I deconstructed them, started assigning point values and started looking at the balancing aspects. And that way I also did this with Bethany 20, but I think I did it in a more holistic way. And then now what you're doing is rebuilding up from there. It does lose some of the the exclusivity that Dungeons and Dragon has. Like one of the things that is exclusive to, you know, fighters cannot cast spells. That's the wizard domain or the cleric domain. And mm-hmm. cleric or wizards cannot easily uh, carry a two-handed sword and wear plate mail armor. And that's the exclusivity that's been in D&D since the beginning. So mm-hmm. when you have an, a point-based game, suddenly exclusivity is gone if I've opened it up and I have opened it up, which could lead to some balancing issues. But it also leads to the guy that says, well, I want to play a fighter, but I know this one spell. And I got, the, I get this one thing I can do. I can, I can, whatever it is, I can heal, I can teleport, I can fly, but I'm, I'm a D and D fighter. It's like, great, you can do it now. And I, now I give you the concepts of how to do that. So it breaks down the exclusivity, but it increases the inclusivity of creating the characters that you want to create, just like you can do in Besom, but now it does it with a fifth edition framework. Okay. Now I, I, I will admit that the idea sounds great. But I have real reservations about the execution. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make any prejudgments <laughs> on it. I want to see it when it comes out next year. Uh, do you have a time frame? First, second, third quarter? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I'm thinking, given its level of development and where we are, um, like the cover art's done, all the interior art's done, the layout's done. We're doing some play testing. Uh, mm-hmm. And some of the, one of the things in this current Bessem Kickstarter that we have at high, the higher pledge levels, some people are getting early access to some play test files uh, to give some input if they're interested in for Anime 5e. So I'm thinking probably first quarter is when I plan to do some crowdfunding for it. I think this is going to be not the book for Bessem players, because they already have that. That's Bessem 4th edition. Yeah. These are for our D&D players that want a little bit more of their game, or their anime are D&D players that maybe like anime, and they want that anime feel in it. And so I'm thinking crowdfunding it first quarter, coming out second or third. But of course, uh, right now, long-term predictions aren't exactly the forte of anyone <laughs> in the world Fair currently. Enough. So you know, we think that's what it's going to be. Yeah, we're, we're just going to say end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth <laughs> quarter of, of 2021, when you could actually get this in your hand. Yeah, I mean, I would normally have said, it'll be up at Gen Con. But now th- those cons dates aren't meaningful, perhaps. Yeah, anymore. yeah, we don't I know almost what lost a few grand hold. on this last one. So, so th- we're getting a few comments uh, on this fi- 5e thing. I- I'm going to kind of pose a, 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 we'll call it a question. But it's going to be with my take on it, and please correct me where I'm wrong, and uh, and tell me where you think I'm right. To me, that there's this putting of so. First of all, I can't stand Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to be very upfront about that. I don't like. I don't even like the rule set for it, let alone what it is in terms of Dungeons and Dragons. But that's neither here nor there. They're here nor there. I see this as a very smart, kind of like what you were talking about with the D20 version, a smart business decision. Get in there, become the anime name. Uh, people, as we all know, once they start playing D&D or pretty much any other game, whatever their first game is, they don't like to leave it. So, you know, uh, so keep with that rule set. I absolutely get that, understand that. And I think it is a smart business decision and something you should do. And you also said that this isn't for Besson players. This is for people on the D&D side. My question with this is uh, for people who play Besson or for people who would like to get those players to eventually merge or move from the fifth edition core rules to the tri-stat system. Uh, it, he already answered that question. I mean, with, with the original D20 thing, he said his original intention was to try and get people right. over to Bethlehem and that was that, not... So I'm, so I'm asking that for the fifth edition side oh, of it, it Oh, do you still have that mindset? Right. Yeah. Right. And and honestly, although, you know, you could always look and say, well, why wouldn't you want more people playing all of your products? And obviously, if I can get a person buying one, buying all of our books, great. That's that's good for us. But there's a there is a reason Bessem is not part of this new game. It is anime 5e. And it's very specific because it is not Bessem. It is 5e, but it's an anime version of it. And it's somewhat intended to Educate, but not from an arrogance point of view, the way I, I, I had it back in the early 2000s, but educate of, hey, here's some ideas about effects in a game and what you can do with effects and how it's a little bit different. And here's some ideas about 
uh, point balancing, where points as a concept doesn't exist in D&D. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just there. You go up in level and you get an ability. Well, now you go up in a level and you get one ability and then you get four points. And you can spend these four points on anything you want. And you got this book of, oh my gosh, what am I going to spend these four points on? I'd like to have an extra proficiency. Or maybe I want to, to increase my saving throw on something. Or maybe I want to fly. And, and have this new thing that I can do. And so while if people got educated about they're, they're strictly D&D &D players, like I was, I was a second edition AD&D &D guy. That was my thing. And it's still in many ways my favorite version. But, but looking back now that I've worked with fifth edition so well, I like it better than three and I like it better than four. Uh, I, it's, it's probably technically better than two, uh, although two is still my baby because that's what I grew up with. But uh, it's it's giving people who play fifth edition a peek behind the curtain into other aspects of game design and what is possible while doing it with respect that if you don't want to, you can still 100% play in your sandbox of your fifth edition of your power based. And I'm not going to break that, but I'm going to give you a little bit more flexibility than you currently have and allow you to decide how far you want to go with that. And yeah, maybe some people will come over. I'm not going to certainly be quiet on the fact that we've done Bessem because that is the, the start of Anime 5e was Bessem. But if people only want the Anime 5e and they just want to continue playing d and I'm totally fine with that because this is a product for them, not for just an acquisition product. Uh, at least that's okay. what I'd like to think. My motivation is different than it used to be. Uh, I'm at a different place than I was you know, almost 20 years ago now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a uh, question again from Shadzar. We got a few other people did ask questions, but apparently he asked a bunch right away. But uh, why as a game maker, would you say that one power mentioned previously, Mulligan, was underpowered while everyone else thinks it's overpowered? I actually think you answered that so in the chat, yeah, but go ahead. Right. But let's 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 hear. Sure. Yeah, no, that, that's a good question. Uh, and obviously, everyone has a, a different point of view, but I come from a very narrative uh, focus of my games. And so when I look at rolling dice, people are like, oh my gosh, I can re-roll four dice around, eight dice a session, 10 dice a session. Look at what I can do with way rolling dice. I'm like, great. But re-rolling dice, all it allows you to do is change the probabilities of something that you can already do versus adding on a new skill set on, on something else you can do. So yes, with these five points, you can reroll tons of dice. And so what you're good at, you're even better at, but breadth and diversity also has some advantages. And so adding on something differently, I looked at it as, as another strength. Um, now, when I typically build characters for almost any game, whether it's Amber or any game, I, I do like not the jack of all trades. I like the focus. So rather than, oh, all my stats are balanced. No, no, I'm going to go 10 in one stat and like three or four in the others. Like That's I'm going to give myself a role-playing <laughs> focus. That's what I like doing. It's not, not a power gaming thing. It's, it's a character-driven narrative focus and the numbers back up my focus. So when I look at the, the game, I may be taking a very different point of view about success and failure because succeeding in a die roll to me is irrelevant because the story is going to be better with a success or a failure. It doesn't matter if I succeed or not. What matters is what is the, the story going to be? How can my character, how can I in integrate with the narrative of the, of the story and giving me more powers to play with and more diversity to play with? or in some ways more power, like going from mind control level three to level four, for example, that gives me more story hooking than just saying, oh, I succeeded at this role. Well, if you didn't succeed at the role, the game is still gonna be great because the game, the, the, the quality of the game should not be dependent upon your success or fails of your roles. That is irrelevant, which is why I look at re-rolling as the least important aspect of, of all of Bessem. And some people like you had, you know, you're kind of the, your first look at it. You instantly said, "Oh, one, <laughs> two, two dice rolls is too powerful. It should be one per level." And I've run all the the calculations on it from a balancing point of view, and I actually think it should probably be three or four per level, uh, <laughs> the dice rolls, in order to make it worth one point. Because that one point, from a role playing narrative point of view, in a different place, is so much more powerful than just having a better chance of succeeding at something that doesn't have any change to how much you're going to enjoy the story because you're going to enjoy the story whether you succeed or you fail because if you don't then the story's not being done very well so you you mentioned a couple of things there that uh, that I want to point out to people in our chat is uh 
obviously you're mentioning story a lot and i know there's this big weird rift between rpg games and story games and i i don't care about any of that i i like story in a game um but what you said to me speaks to almost all or or the thought process between a lot of different rules light systems it's like sure i don't care you can roll the dice 100 times doesn't matter uh, we're trying to make. We're here to make this simple. We're here to uh, move things along. The dice rolls are only intended for when they're important, anyway. So, sure, you want to re-roll it fifteen times. Re-roll it fifteen times. Can we move along now? I, I'm not saying you're saying those words, but it's just uh, it's kind of that rules light mentality of either it worked or didn't work. Let's go on. It's more, as you said, like in the diversity of characters and in the story and how that's progressing in and of itself. It's something I actually agree with. Hearing you say that makes perfect sense to me i still have to see it in play i haven't played but uh conceptually i like that yeah and some of the, the most fun i've ever had in in any game with board games or role-playing games is when you don't succeed in what you're doing mm -hmm. like when i'm playing a, a heavy euro game i'd much rather losing against a better opponent than winning against a weaker opponent i want to lose because then i'll learn something and it's a more mm -hmm. interesting aspect when i'm playing a role-playing game and you you have these plans and you're executing these plans and then the npc that you were trusting backstabs you and screws up your plans and something bad happens to you i'm not saying you, you lose an arm or anything but narratively you wanted to win your character wanted to win and now your character is losing when that happens often i find as a player i'm winning more than than i'm i'm losing that way i win mm -hmm. when my character's put into conflict and gets unexpected results and i'm not saying that you know ne you never want to succeed in dice rolls of course the, the mulligan there can be kind of fun i mean who doesn't when you're playing dd and you roll that d20 and you get a 20 it's like oh my gosh it's amazing i mean the dice rolling it, it's valuable it has its has its strength there but if you have a group of players and you're fighting against this big bad in a dungeon or dnd &D or, or besom and everything's dependent upon this one thing happening right and it doesn't well unless you're all going to get eaten and the gm cancels the game then the fallout of what you have to do now that your your plan failed that can often be much more fun than actually succeeding Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I'm seeing a bunch of comments in here. It seems like they're talking back and forth. There, I know there's a couple. Yes, we are reading Twitch chat. We'll, we'll get back to you, Crafty, because we owe you a big thanks for that. I just we have a guest on, so I want to make sure that we're still moving this forward. I want to ru run a quantum leap game in Bessem. That sounds interesting. No, that 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 is that is it, it's it's a, a similar way of running a game as as what. Uh, what uh, Mark actually said about uh, a, a Stargate game or a Sliders yeah. game, you know, the, I, I, that's, I like the comment. Yeah. 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 The, the uh, quantum leap thing is instead of traveling in space to, to an unfamiliar place, you're traveling in time to an unfamiliar place. So yeah, I mean, the, the, the rules could be adapted pretty easily for that. Yeah. I wrote this down already, but since it was brought up in the chat, I'm going to, so uh, would you like to talk about future products? What are one of the things I'm going to do here? So I'm going to share your Kickstarter page again. I can find it. Share that. Let's get it over to the Kickstarter one. Uh, if you want to talk about what is in here, I will try to scroll and keep up. Yeah, and and you know, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for that. I didn't come on here to you know promote our stuff or whatnot. I came in to to see what you were doing, and but I, and I really do appreciate this kind of exposure. So Bessem Extras is the next wave of the Bessem product. So when the first Kickstarter in 2019, so that was your core book. Mm -hmm. uh, in two different versions, you got your rules, lighter version of the core book, Bessem Naked, as well your your existing core book. And then you had your your standard stuff that supports your base game. You got your GM Scream and Adventure, you had your character folio, you know, the expanded character sheets, and you had dice. And so that was the first wave. Oh, and, and Bessem Primer, which is the free thing that just kind of gives you a 16 page, really stripped down version of Bessem so you can understand what it's about. So that was the first wave of Bessem. This is now the next wave that's focused primarily on Bessem Extras as the, the, um, the centerpiece of it. Bessem Extras, mm -hmm. it's a 144 page full color book, which is the optional and enhanced rule options for Bessem. And you'd think, well, Bessem was 200, 350 pages long and it's a rules life system you're saying, how could there possibly be more? Well, part of it is, is giving options as opposed to saying this is now a rule. So here's how you can do critical hits and here's several different ways to do critical hits. Here's how to change the cost of ability of a, uh, uh, stats. So instead of a straight two per stat, what if you priced it based on a Fibonacci sequence? What if oh. the first four were free 
And then after that cost five for every extra one. And so every option that we're presenting is a different way for you to look at the game and say, oh, this is an interesting I can bring into the game. And so we expanded it with social combat rules. So you you have the two main characters, very dramatic situation in anime, a verbally sparring at a bar uh, with all these patrons around them. How do you resolve that? Well, we have social combat rules. We have mass combat rules so that you can resolve a hundred year war between two you know, a, an elven army and an orc party, you can resolve with one more role for a hundred years done. Like this is see, the type of options you're, you're actually stepping in into an area. Whereas one of the things I love about the year zero engine, because I think it has some of the best social combat rules out there. And if you've got a system that competes with that, <laughs> that's something that I'm definitely interested in. Well, it does with a, it, I, mean, I don't know if it competes. I mean, that's going to be, of course, uh, everyone's individual you know, sure. aspect of whether they like it. Uh, but we, we bring stuff into Bessem that hasn't been there before. Sanity rules. So Call of Cthulhu is obviously very big. So what if these tentacled horrors from other dimensions are, you know, do you want to bring in uh, the concept of sanity? Well, we give those rules as well as all the things like called shots and critical mm -hmm. hits and critical fumbles. And di we have diceless Bessem. Here's how you run Bessem diceless. In addition, we have these packed of abilities think of them like like a spell book effectively except we're not calling them spells because what if they're not based on magic what if it's a psionic ability what if it's a technological ability these are power packs and power bundles that we bring through as well as over 70 items that we've statted out to either use exactly as they are or i think of the more important role to give people the idea of how you can create items and some of the attribute combinations so one of the interesting things in there is we have a tinfoil hat is an item we stat out that gives you a mind shield, but only if you believe it actually works. Uh, hmm. And so these are some kind of aspects that people hadn't really thought of that we're bringing into this. So that's what the, the main focus of this new Kickstarter is best and extras. It's the essential optional rule book. Past Excellent. there, we also have five other expansions. We have Dramatis Personae, which is 71 NPCs plus an organization. And so that's a, another hardcover, full color. And it's really designed to uh, just give people a bunch of characters that they can play with and it's a great resource for that We have 2d animinis where these are the cardboard minis that we have so we can't do all these miniatures that other companies can do this isn't a minis game and it honestly we don't have tactical actions and tactical movements in Bessem. it's not really that type of game but some people yeah. still want some sort of visual representation when they're on a table and i like doing it even though i don't use squares and hexes and exact distances yeah. but just kind of well this was where the general stuff is so we give uh there's 110 cardboard minis that we provide in here and so people can use them in their games so we also have, have the have dice any... tower and dice tray so this is completely frivolous. Does anyone need a dice tower or dice tray? No, there's a table. You could roll it on any surface. But what this is, it's kind of neat. The dice tower is, a, you know, it's a tree. It's a water slide going inside a tree from one of our prime worlds. And we think it's kind of a cute little way to roll your dice in the, the dice tower. And it's constructed a cardboard. You just, we give you punch boards, you punch it out and put it together. And then two trays as well, in case you don't want to use the tower, you want multiple options and either just, you just snap them together, really quick neoprene dice trays. And so one once again, just a simple resource. And then the last two products are smaller books. Uh, Bessem Adventures, Volume 1, is a 32-page two-part adventure that is for introductory level characters. That is a, kind of a world hopping between two different worlds. You go back and forth, and you get powers when you're in one, and then you go back to the other world, and you're back to your normal character. So you kind of play with two different types of characters in that one in the adventure. And then Bessem Tokyo Sidekick is actually a partnership with, with our publishing partner we have japan anime game so they handle all of our sales fulfillment and they are coming out with a board game called tokyo sidekick which is an import of a japanese board game and mm. there's a bunch of characters in this this is your standard anime superhero so think of my hero academia well this is effectively like a my hero academia board game and what we've done is we've statted out the characters from the board game so again it's more npcs but it's more of a superhero npc so that's what this kickstarter is about it's six expansion products none of them are necessary all you need is a core book that's it one one book will give you everything you need extras is a really good optional book and i'd highly recommend that if people could could just stretch their budget and get one more product best some extras is what i'd recommend and then after that it's like well 
what do you want for your game? How do you want to expand it? Do you want more NPCs? Do you want a GM screen? Do you want dice? Do you want a place to roll the dice? And so that's what this Kickstarter was. And we have the second batch uh, for this. And because we've already taken a slightly different method for most Kickstarters, where everything's printed and is shipping over from our factory now, this Kickstarter ends in early December. And hopefully, if things go well with customs, by the end of December, this will all be fulfilled physical products as well as digital. So super fast fulfillment on this one. Well, so one of the things that, I, that I see again, on I, here. I, I, Oops, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I like, didn't so, want to really make this kind of like a sales pitch, but that's what oh, we're doing currently. There's more yeah. stuff for 2021 I can talk about if people wanted, but that's what's currently up. Sure. And, you know, we can, we can talk about that in just a moment. Well, actually, oh, I, well you got to go. I got to go, care. yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. Mark, it was, uh, well, it was, it was great really meeting you. Nice talking to you. I really appreciate you, you stopping by our little stream to, to see what, what we think about your piddly little game. And <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you, you decided to come on with us and, uh, and talk with us. It, it, uh, it, it gave us better insight in the game. And that's exactly what we do on this. When, when we go an overview, we want to glean some insight in this game to see if it's, you know, if it's worth a much closer look, if it's worth a buy basically. And, uh, for for the most part, your book is worth it is worth a buy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm glad I was uh, introduced to it, and I was glad I'm, I'm glad I was introduced to you. So I want to say goodbye. Well, thanks, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing more from you. Great, and I like to say All goodbye right. to everyone else as well, especially uh, Max Liao. Yeah, get and, out of here. Uh, I got things to talk back. about. Yeah, I'll <laughs> be back uh, on uh, Monday for m Monday, Wednesday, seven days to die. Yeah, so with the seven days to die stream during the day, and uh, of course Saturday night and uh, Thursday night with uh, Smite and Risk. So uh, look for me then. Until then, don't look for me now because I'm out. Everyone <laughs> have a good one. Thanks, man. Thanks. So the, the what I what I wanted to mention here is like I use the Arc Knight miniatures. I don't know if you know what those are. They're like the clear plastic. So yeah. your your standees because I keep getting yelled at that they're not miniatures. I don't care. Uh, but uh, so I actually like. So for me, it would be extras and these actual uh, these standees. I enjoy that stuff because I tend to play. Doesn't matter what game I'm playing. I tend to play theater of the mind, kind of like you talked about in your book. And I use these as just generic representations of like, okay, this is about where everybody is. This is what you're trying to do. Let's go ahead. Let's move it. Let's talk about it. Let's go on. I don't like five foot rules. I don't like 10 foot rules. I don't like squares. If I'm going to do anything like that, I'll do a hex, you know, but so I, that's actually what I've been most interested in. I don't see a lot of people actually trying to do quality standees. Uh, it's either minis, like you were saying, which is crazy if you don't batch build them or, you know, it's a, it's a here here's a file. Go put it on your 3D printer. Well, not all of us have that. <laughs> so. Yeah, precisely. So, uh, is there? Uh, you talked about things going forward. Is there a web page that can I go uh, on your page here? Uh, actually, hold on. Before I do that, let me one more time put this into chat. So yeah, so we don't typically talk too much on our. Okay. Um, like on our website, we usually only put kind of things that are done or in the process of being done on a website. The projects we talk about what will be coming out for 2021, that's usually up to the socials, talks like this, uh, Discord, we'll, we'll have some discussions on there about what's coming. And so we allude to in, in this Kickstarter, in some of the higher pledge levels, we talk about accessing playtest files for a game called Pixie and a game called Anime 5e. Pixie is, think of this as a, um, the new version of a focused tri stack game. And so Bessem, which covers everything, is, you know, every setting, every power level is 352 pages. Well, if I'm dealing with the borrowers slash Arietti slash Pixies living in your house and what they can do, well, now it's a 32 page tri stack book, which is still a complete game. Mm -hmm. But it, it no longer needs to give you everything they can do because Pixies can't do everything. And so this is going to be a beginner's box set uh, type of thing. So there's a 32-page rule book. There are six characters uh, or six day character sheets that have pictures and then their full stats on them. You can pass around to the players as well as... Uh, what we're calling uh, scenarios, which aren't full 32 page adventures, but they're kind of like one page adventures that you can run through. And here's the, the parameters of those. And then there's going to be dice in there as well. And so for a reasonable price point, it's now an application of a very specific version of TriStat. Now, mm -hmm. could you just do this from the core book? Well, sure. But we are presenting characters and a setting and concepts around that and also limitations. So now instead of these open-ended dynamic powers for magic, 
pixies get access to, there are three different levels of magic and there are six spells in each level and that's what they get access to. So I'm a, I can do level three magic and I have two spells I get access to and that's it. So I think it's more like a, like a D and D style mage in that aspect, but still everything true through Tristat lands. And so that's the pixie game. Those are kind of two of the previously announced big, bigger. I mean, Pix Pixies is still pretty small because it's an introductory style game and it'll be a box set. Uh, but the Anime 5e is a standalone core game, anime and added onto your fifth edition D&D &D game. The Pixies is the new version of the Tristat and there'll be a line of those types of boxes. And then the fifth one or the, the third one, if we people knew we were doing it, and this is the new version of Silver Age Sentinels, which we're calling Absolute mm -hmm. Power. Uh, and the reason why that comes from, you know, the obviously quote about power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts, absolutely. This is not the boys uh, TV <laughs> show. You're not, Silver Age Sentinels version two is not the boys, but it's a point where all of the heroes who were in the game, Silver Age Sentinels came out in 2001, was set in 2001. Well, now this new game is set in 2021. It's now 20 years later. The setting has progressed by 20 years. The characters are now 20 years older. And the world is not the same as it was, obviously. Um, and right now, all the heroes are effectively encouraged to just reach a little bit further for a little bit more power because then they can protect you better, right? And, you know, we, we see that very common in the real world. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how far do you go with some of those those reaches for power if it's for your own good? And these are some of the the conflicts that some of the characters are going to have to have. And then you have characters that 20 years ago, you know, who were like authoritarian regime leaders, um, they're looking now, 20 years later, thinking, uh, am I even relevant in this world anymore? Because uh, there's lots of countries doing what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. And so they have to advance the world. And so this is absolute power. It's a tri-stat game. It uses the same system as Bessem. And so if someone wanted to buy it that already owned Bessem and they wanted a completely new system, that's not, you wouldn't buy it for that purpose. But this is the superhero version. And you know, we talked about about Bessem kind of like level six for most of the attributes. Well, this is level 10 because superheroes are obviously Makes ratchet sense. up a power level. So now level 10 is very common for every attribute. That's our main big focus of our three key points next year are, is hmm. absolute power, pixies, and anime 5e. And then the fourth thing I'll just mention, it's not we're not in a position where we can talk about the date, but we have a writer lined up. And this is the next Bessem book, which is Bessem Multiverse. This is the setting book. It'll be roughly 140 pages. And it goes into the settings of the prime worlds and, and gives examples about how magic works in Excellent. specific worlds versus other worlds. It is, a, it is the setting book for a multi-genre universal game. Uh, we're hoping to have it out by the end of 2021, but it's still in the earliest phases. So we're not really ready to talk too much about that is, but that was the last big Bessem book was the multiverse. So I know I've been talking a long time and you know, oh, using no. this as a commercial, which was my, Please my do. Intent, but thank you for the opportunity to ask those questions and to give the answers. You know what I appreciate? So, so far, everybody we've had on the show has either been from UK or Canada or you know, wherever. No, nobody wants to shill themselves. And I'm like, please, we brought you on, shill yourself. So no, you're, you're all good here. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, uh, or you mentioned about that, and maybe I'm taking it the wrong way, but it's how, again, how my noodle works, is one of the things that D&D &D that I don't like about what they're doing now is they're just, it's like setting books are anathema to them. It sounds like these, what you're trying to make, are setting books. And that's something that I absolutely appreciate whether it's the palladium system where you know every book's got a little bit different rules with same kind of system or it's the year zero engine stuff where everything's a different setting or or uh oh my god i had another one in my head it, either way um i like having a unified rule system that i can say this is we're playing the anime version we're playing the superhero version we're playing the pixie version i personally i like that i could picture myself doing a fantasy dungeons and dragons type game using the tri set system just with people with big eyes and small mouths and spiky hair uh i i, I so as i say oh so you're setting books again that's how i'm taking it uh especially with the silver age uh sentinels i i absolutely i like that concept is that what you're looking for is to kind of create a setting in that or are you just trying to show different ways of using besom no, in many ways, it's it's kind of an execution of what we did with the previous company uh, when we were first doing the TriStat expansions. And I'll let you in a little, little secret that what everyone says they want is not what everyone is willing to buy. 
So what True. people want, and they say they want, is give me one core rule book that's expensive, and then mm -hmm. give me a bunch of accessories. Don't reprint the rules, because I don't want to rebuy rules. Give me everything and make them half the price, make them really cheap. So give me all, I want a, a fantasy book. I got the TriStack core book. Now give me the fantasy setting. Now give me the horror setting. Now let mm -hmm. me give this setting. And don't put rules in any of those. Well, what this turns into, is these are now all expansions for one game. They are not core books. And players love core books. Players yep. will buy core books. They won't do what they say they want to do because we've we've tried that. We did TriStat DX, which was the standalone version, stripped out version of TriStat back in the early 2000s. And we made it available for free downloading or it was a $10 book, super cheap. And then the goal was then to give all these expansions, which stripped out the system and were just the the mechanics of that we did that with Bessem with the the license books we did uh initially sailor moon tenshi muyo el hazard were full complete games then we when we came out with second edition Bessem, we said great we're going to do these new anime licenses ultimate fan guides which gives you all the same content that we would do in a normal game but we're not going to give you the game because you already own the game that's Bessem second edition but we're going to do ultimate fan guides which will provide you the skills the the character stats for all, all of them we're going to give you full background talk about the show it'll be great financially not a good choice and it's we hmm. did far better by releasing core books so even if we do 20 different anime licenses we would be better to release 20 core books with all the same rules reprinted than we would book to promote one core book and then a bunch of setting expansions so what we're doing a little bit differently this time given that we know the limitations of what people actually want is we're no longer presenting the entirety of this giant book in a game like pixie we're very being very specific and we're stripping it down to only what you need for that genre but then in addition because we're stripping it down we now have a little bit of flexibility on re on presenting some aspects we didn't have before for example if you remember when you're talking about oh look we had uh health points is body plus soul times five yes well now in pixies health points is just body times soul or body plus soul it's not times five so health points is no longer times five, which means our armor is no longer times five, which means our damage is no longer times five. And we've stripped out a variable of five in everything. And so now your attack does one damage or two damage and your armor stops one damage or two damage. I mean, it simplifies things down and it's the same system. Uh, and you could easily just multiply everything back by five again, but that five times granularity was needed in a game like Bessem because we had to cover an entire range mm -hmm. of a universal system. And so we needed a much more granularity. When we're stripping everything down to one specific genre, one setting, we can remove some of that granularity and have a tighter book with it, which is a slightly different presentation of TriStat system that's still 100% compatible, but it's just a slight variation. And that's one of the things we're looking at doing. And so it's kind of a blend of what I think Think people say they want and then what people are willing to pay for and we're trying to come up with a blend of those uh is it going to be successful well i don't know because we haven't released it yet but i think this is a winning combination with this new version of the tristat additional books something like our big ones like our like absolute power is going mm -hmm. to be Bessem, but it's superheroes. It's still a massive amount of content, 350 page book. Like it's still going to be really big, full on <laughs> core book, full color, really awesome product. That one, we're not giving it a short treatment. But with this other line of, of examples, the settings, as you mentioned, we're trying something a little bit different with that. And we have, you know, Pixies is our first one. We're going to do some interesting thing with dragons. We're going to do some stuff with zombies, uh, you know, some of uh, variations, but not always what people expect. This isn't going to be your standard zombie book or your standard dragon book or whatever we do next uh it's going to be have a different spin on it that hopefully will give people ideas on what to do with their own stuff because part of our our goal has never been to say here's the game here's the setting use it exactly as it is it's here's what we our ideas are now and in, get inspired by what we gave you and do your own thing and you've been very clear about that even in the Besson book as well and i like that you got a couple of people excited about dragons myself as one, so I think that book might do it, right? I don't know if this question was uh, directed towards you or if it was towards Chad. I can't quite tell at this point, but it was, uh, why why not just help introduce... So I think this was back on the uh, Anime 5e. Uh, why not just help introduce people to a new game, talking about Bessemer Tristat. So like, hey, you want to play this game? I've got this game for you. It's not 5e, but I'll help you learn it. Uh, I don't know if that question was directly towards you, but if you've got a comment on that. Yeah, I'd say just in general, D&D uh, &D players play D&D. &D, mm -hmm. And thus, they want to buy D&D &D stuff. You, if you look at Kickstarter, 
What are the top oh God. selling RPG Everything's 5e. factors? <laughs> now they are. It's not just and the Pathfinder. <laughs> All the core books by the big name people. When Monty Cook does something, it's going to go huge, right? When World of Darkness people do something, going to go huge. There's no doubt about that. But strip out those big successes, which are usually core books. Strip out those, and you have the Dungeons and Dragons spell book. Boom, $400,000, like massive amounts of backing. And it's not that I'm saying I'm trying to tap into that funds, but there's a huge player base that I would love to be able to access and just give them some things that maybe they hadn't thought about before. Because I think most of the 5e stuff that's coming out now, that is just more of what they're used to. It's just it's just more. So here's D&D and here's more of it. Well, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, well, here's a variation of D&D. And here's a an anime aspect of it that's now a point-based aspect, that's now a balanced aspect. Because if anyone thinks that a first level bard and a first level wizard are balanced, they're crazy. They're not. <laughs> uh, the mathematically, I don't think they are. And I broke them all down. And it's clear that the two most powerful classes in basic fifth edition and first level is a barbarian and a wizard. And they're both 200 points in the new version of anime 5e and other okay. aspects you know this ranger might be only be 170 points at first you know is what they like overall and so i have to bump those up that's not just over first level that's over 20 levels and so there's adjustments on these characters and so why don't i just say play this other game and show them that is because D, &D players don't want to be told that they're playing the wrong game they love D&D, <laughs> they want to play D&D, and I want to allow them to keep playing that. I just want to give them some extra tools that maybe they don't have currently. So, so Mark Hockman, if I don't ask this soon, Mark Hockman's going to stab me. Uh, he keeps asking if you've read or played, uh, I've got to find one of the comments, but do you know what uh, those who hunt elves are? Yeah. Tanks in a fantasy land. Uh, let's see, see, I was trying to find his exact question. I know he's posted a couple of times in here. Uh... I can't find it. Mar Hawkman, if you want to ask it a fourth or fifth time, copy and paste it. I don't know. I don't see your actual exact question in here, but I know you mentioned it a couple of times. So I'm not skipping anybody's questions, or at least I'm not trying to. It's just, you know, I want to give uh, Mark time to say what he needs to say. And uh, you guys are chatting, which we do appreciate. Uh, was it uh, some tentacles? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> if you didn't catch from earlier, my wife is actually Japanese, so uh, she always gives me crap over this stuff. I did. Let's see. So, oh yeah. So, uh, nope. That was. I can't fire my Hawkman. You'll have to post it again. Other than that, I think we're actually caught up on the questions towards you directly. Uh, Nora, question for McCann. Are you familiar? Oh, okay. So you said. Uh, thank you, Noro. Uh, yeah. So you answered that question. Are you familiar with those who hunt elves? I I like the name of that because I'd like to hunt elves. Or have you? Yeah, tried I mean, I've, I've seen it a long time ago. I'm not up with it currently. He has. Uh, have you tried running a game in that sort of? Genre? Oh, a game? No, I, I haven't. In that specific <laughs> one, I, I have not. Some of the ideas about that I got about the, the cross genre and the moving between them were somewhat inspired by some of that. Certainly, um, the idea of, of tanks in a fantasy world is pretty neat, uh, and that's you know you can do that easily with the, the rules that we present. The the big I guess the the big cross genre one right now obviously is like, is huge, but uh, it's obviously Sword Art Online with mm -hmm. people going to the alternate worlds. And that is just kind of like the new version of El Hazard. You know? And, and, and you know, we did a book on El Hazard, which is here's how you take these regular characters. And this is where the unknown superhero power came from the El Hazard game that we, that's when it was first created because these characters, these high schoolers ended up in this world and they didn't know they had new abilities until they discovered they had them. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to have that in Bessem. So it came out in that game and now we've adopted it into the full fourth edition. Yeah, I think I saw that uh, post earlier. Mar Hockman says that's one of the things that reminded him. You know, I I, I have to say, uh, I'm one of those people, I think you mentioned it in one of your live streams that uh, that you had, is that Sword Art Online kind of rejuvenated the popularity. Uh, I have to tell you, that's what worked on me. I, I still don't watch anime. It's not that I hate it. I don't avoid it or anything. It's just it's not my cup of tea necessarily. However, through Sword Art Online, I then started watching Log Horizon, which I thought was better. Same same genre, same idea. Heathen Dog on his Plex servers got a few others. I started watching those. But if it wasn't for that, I probably to this day still would be making fun of anime. <laughs> so, so I mean, so <laughs> yeah, the, the, no, those are really good ones. So I, I so that would be something that I could find myself interested in playing. So far, I mean, I, I got to be, you know, I'm not trying to pander because you're here. I'm saying this because I mean it, which is 
I'm actually interested in doing this, which before today, even reading the book over the last couple of weeks since I got it, I'm like, all right, it's a game system. Uh, you might have heard some of the comments I made right at the beginning, uh, you know, where, where Heathen Dog and I disagreed on, you know, whether it's, you know, just a, kind of a GURPS type thing or whatever. But, uh, I mean, hearing how you talk about it, talking through it here, uh, seeing the chat and so on and so forth, I think this is one of those things that I could see myself playing this and enjoying it. And I'm a, I'm a curmudgeon. I'm straight up. I, I, I fully admit that I'm a curmudgeon. I can complain about anything. I, I'm already ready to go. I, I want to play some. Max needs to watch Elf and Lead. I think I've seen that. Or part of that. It sounds so familiar. Or somebody's trying to make me watch it. Um, Log Horizon was great. Mark knows a common friend, C. Beck, that loves that show. Uh, do you know who C. Beck is? Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, it's, yeah, I, yeah, I do from, he's from the Discord, he, uh, one of the, oh, okay, the okay. Discord mods there. Uh, so it's, it's interesting when you mentioned that you can see what you can come from this. And although it might not be where, you know, your initial gaming interests lie, certainly having these kind of interactions with the designer can, you know, pres provide some insight. But also what you'll find is after you go through Best and you're like, and you can spend hours and hours just trying to understand it and you you start with it and then once it's done you have your character it almost fades into the background and disappears during play for most oh, groups great. that i've seen i mean there there might be a couple that don't do it that way but it just it becomes transparent and it's just once in a while you're rolling some dice and obviously in combat you'll do it a little more often but it's usually just all about the story and it's like and you have to have a great game master people say one of the flaws of Bobesim is you have to have an amazing game master i'm like well that's that's true but i don't think that's a flaw like i think that's a strength otherwise it's like when you get into the to the game that are more board game like, so like like I've seen D and D being run more like a board game, mm -hmm. and you know that's that's to me not the role playing experience that I want. So I think they're requiring an excellent game master who can bring out the best of the players as well. I look at that as a feature, not a bug. I, I would agree with you on that one. I, I mean, I come from the old school, but like we've talked about on this stream here, I used to get mocked by the old first edition AD and D players and so forth. Oh, you're one of those Dragonlance campaigners, aren't you? With your role playing all the time. Yep, <laughs> that's exactly who I am. I do. Uh, we, we got a couple. Uh, uh, Mark spent a lot of time here for us, and we we need to appreciate him for that. Also, it is 10:21 p.m. here in Germany. So uh, I do work tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I do want to slowly wrap this up. So anybody with your final questions on here, and uh, and I apologize, going first name base if you prefer to be called Mr. McKinnon. Uh, but uh, it, whatever you want to promote, as soon as we're done with these questions, I'm going to give you all the time in the world to promote discords, websites, whatever whatever you think is important to you, your business, and and Bessem. I want to make sure you get that out there. But let's. Uh, Follow up with a couple questions here. Question: Why haven't you got Matt Mercer the anime V? What? Oh, Shadzar, stop it. <laughs> We're going to skip that question. Uh, and yeah, it's just interesting. Some, we have some strong opinionated people a, 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 on, our, on our show. It's one of the, one of the things that we're about. Uh, matter of fact, normally our segment two is when I go off on a rant about something, but we're not going to do that today. Um, you've been a calming influence on me. Uh, Shadzar is trolling. I noticed that. Yes, he was trolling. Uh, Inuyasha is interesting here. Serious question. It would fit. Okay. I, Chats are. Post that on our Discord. We'll talk later. Interesting here because it mostly plays straight. Okay, uh, that's his comment. I don't know if you're reading any of the comments or not, but uh, okay, uh, I'm going to leave the floor. You've got 10 seconds, 30 minutes. I don't care until you're done, but I, uh, bef I do want to thank you once again. This has been awesome that you came on here and whatever it is, and if you've got a link and you put it in a chat, I will copy and paste it and make sure it gets to all chats because we're streaming on multiple services right now. Yeah, no, no, thanks for that. I mean, it's it's really simple. I don't need a lot to, to wrap up. Uh, you know, I really appreciate this aspect of interacting with, with fans or reviewers or just people who are interested in more. We are really easy to find. I mean, we being small company, I do most of the promotion stuff. Um, so at Descami and that we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we do a lot of effective cross posting between our different platforms. So follow us on the platform of your choice. So at Discami, easy to find. Discami.ca is our website. It has all of our links from there. And then the uh, Facebook page for the Bessem Fourth Edition group is I'd certainly recommend that. If you went to the on the, the website and went to our Facebook page, which is the Scami Facebook page, you can go to the fourth edition group. If you're interested in Bessem, that's a great resource. The second thing, and this is wonderful, it's not an official Discami site, and this is the TriStat fan page, which started out mm -hmm. as a Bessem fan page on 
uh, uh, Discord. But then when they found out I was doing all this other Tristat stuff, like Absolute Power, uh, so now it's turned into the Tristat uh, Discord channel and an amazing group of people there. Uh, Saber Expert is one of the ones that are there and you know interact with him regularly. So great community, highly recommend that anybody check that out. Uh, yeah, just give us a look, whether it's drop us a line on Facebook or Twitter, uh, on Discord, I'm pretty accessible. The stuff speaks for itself. We don't have a lot of products right now. Uh, it's pretty limited, but we have six existing Bessem products. There's going to be six new ones uh, by the end of the year. So the Bessem line could be could be a great place to start if you're looking for some role playing and if you're looking for some other stuff. Keep an eye on us. I think we will be a a good solid micro company. We're not growing big. Not going to have this big office with lots of staff the way we had before. But uh, I think we're doing some interesting stuff for people that are looking for the types of games that we produce. So uh, you know, thanks for for all the time you spent with here and, and all that time you uh, you spent going over that system. And I do look forward to uh, what you got coming up next. Yeah, ne- next week will be. Uh, <laughs> well, that's when we're going to go over actions. I uh, I don't know how. I have I have to actually dig into the second half of the book better. Um, but uh, I'm going to probably skip most of the Game Master stuff. I think it's going to be in three segments. Uh, this one apparently being a lot longer than I intended it to be, but that's okay. I'll break it up on YouTube for this week. But uh, next week's going to be about rolling dice and the mechanics and so forth. And then we'll get into the GM section for the third one. So um, you're welcome here anytime. While we're talking about your game, absolutely. You can jump in. Uh, like I said, you can punch me in the face and tell me where I'm Where I'm like, no, nah, you, you've, you're not understanding this properly. Because we do also want to represent your game properly. I, I hope from our perspective that it also looks like, hey, this is how somebody with experience in gaming but brand new to your game, who has read through it. I'm not going to say I read word for word literally every attribute and so forth, but I, I read through and I understood as best I could. This is how we see it. So if there's anything in there like, hmm, maybe this could use more explanation, or wow, I actually explained that a lot better than I thought I did, you know, going forward. So one of those concerns I have when I'm writing my book is if I'm saying it the way that somebody reading it is going to see it like I did. Uh, I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, certainly it has been. It's interesting that you uh, you had mentioned that you kept forgetting about changing the effective level on the <laughs> enhancements and limiters. You had it written down, so obviously you had, you had been through it. You recorded that, but you know during the discussion, you, you're talking about point changes, of course. And so it is interesting that uh, you know it, I, I like seeing the lens that you have going through the game because then it shows you know what, what some of the way it was presented was it presented in a way that you know kind of was my vision or are other people seeing that same thing so no this has been really really helpful if i can tune in next week uh, i certainly will do so i'll just let you know that it was the twitter link that got my attention here i think you tagged their company in it i saw it retweeted it and that was the link so that worked somebody's to gonna attention. keep me so on twitter i hate twitter <laughs> and uh yeah no that that was really great so thanks again <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate you, uh, appreciate you having me on here. And you have uh, everyone, thank you everyone for participating. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again sometime. And thank you as well. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Saber expert. If you want to uh, post that discord link, that would be great. Um, Noro posted the Discami YouTube. Um, everybody, if you get an opportunity, you guys, anybody who's watched this show, more than this episode, or if you go look at our, our YouTube videos, we can be very uh, vitriolic. Um, we can say some things that uh, that modern D&D players and this modern sensitivity don't like. But at the same time, I like to think that we're honest. So we're not always the, the friendliest people in that regard, but he came on. And, and I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, too. When I saw his... Uh, when I saw his videos, he seemed like a really friendly guy. Obviously passionate about the games that he makes. Uh give him a thank you check him out on discord find one of those videos out there thank him for for being on our show uh, you know people who treat us with respect deserve to be thanked and treated with respect back 